Hi everyone, it's Chris from Body Mass Composition Testing and today we're going to be going over our resting metabolic rate test. Here at Body Mass, we use the core review to measure our RMR, or resting metabolic rate. Our resting metabolic rate is how many calories our body burns just operating itself in a relaxed state. So the way it works, we breathe into a tube for 10 minutes. It gives us our resting rate for 10 minutes. It multiplies it out over a day. And that's what, how we get our RMR. Um, our RMR does not take into account digestion, movement, or exercise. It's just normal body operations. So when we're looking at this sheet, our resting metabolic rate test is going to be this number in the orange box. It's labeled resting energy expenditure. So that's gonna be the number we're going to focus on today. Right above that, it gives us our lifestyle and activity calories in the lighter shade box. That's gonna be how many calories our body burns during non-exercise activity. Remember, this is just an estimate. So if you're somebody that moves a lot throughout the day, that number may be really higher. If you're someone that's pretty sedentary, that number may be a little bit lower. Above that, we get exercise calories. Again, this is going to be an estimate, and if you read the description of exercise, it's 30 minutes at a moderate level. Most people that we see here doing a resting metabolic rate test probably aren't doing a moderate workout. They're probably also not doing it for 30 minutes. So we can assume that number is probably going to be higher, but for today's purpose, it's not gonna make a big difference. So if we add up those three numbers, our resting, our uh, lifestyle and activity calories, and then our exercise calories, it's gonna give us an idea of how many calories our body burns throughout the day. So for me, I burn almost 3,500 calories uh, in a normal day. Right below that, it's gonna give us um, a comparison to what's called a predictive norm. So predictive norm is we're comparing you to what we could expect someone of a similar sex, age, height, and weight, uh, to burn in a normal day or to burn at a resting metabolic rate. So that number right down here is going to be put on a scale of the predictive norm. Right in the middle is going to be normal. Plus or minus 10% is also considered normal. So if your resting metabolic rate test says you're, you know, 5% faster than uh, predicted, that's still normal and vice versa if it was 5% lower. So we can see, is my metabolism considered fast or is my metabolism considered slow? At the end of the day, does that really mean anything? No, we see people with higher body fat percentage who have a really fast metabolism. We see people with a really low body fat percentage that have a slow metabolism. So just because you're high or low doesn't have any real reflection on your physique, but it does have a reflection on the next part of the test. So the next part of the test readout is gonna give us um, three different zones. We can kind of create a fourth zone if we want to. These zones create a calorie range based on your goal. So it's gonna tell you how many calories you need to eat if you wanna accomplish something specific. The first zone, the pink one, is going to be our medically supervised zone. So our medically supervised zone is really designed for people who are in a medical setting Doctors want them to lose weight really, really fast because they're very obese and we need to get them to lose weight to de-stress their system. So make it easier for their body to work. When that's the case, you don't care if they're losing muscle or fat. We just want that weight to come off very, very rapidly. So what we're gonna do, put them in a real big deficit. They're probably being monitored by a doctor through blood tests, other measurables and chances are they're probably not even exercising. We're just getting a huge deficit through the food. Uh, medically supervised zone, um, sadly, is where we find most people actually eat. So if you're eating in that range, we're in such a, such a deficit that you're probably going to lose 
the mass and we're probably going to lose a little bit of fat with it but the loss of the lean mass is going to be a real real negative so we want to stay out of that range the next zone right above that is going to be our weight loss zone so weight loss zone is also going to put us in a caloric deficit compared to our resting metabolic rate so even if we are not exercising we should be able to lose fat because we're in a deficit so that zone is going to start with the resting metabolic rate as the top part of the zone and then it's going to put us in a caloric deficit so if you're someone that's not training a lot we probably want to eat on the lower end if you're someone that's getting a lot of exercise we probably want to eat on the higher end so if i eat on the higher end my resting rate 2500 calories when I start to exercise, move more, I'm going to drive it into a deficit which should create fat loss. If I'm not exercising, I can eat on the low end and I'm already in a deficit just based on, uh, on our lower calories. Slightly above that is going to be our maintenance zone. So our maintenance zone is designed to kind of keep you where you are. You might see a little bit of increase in lean mass based on your training. Same thing with fat loss. But it's more for people who have kind of gotten to the place that they want to be. They want to stay there, but they're not trying to gain a bunch of lean, not trying to lose a lot of fat. They're just trying to maintain. So what's going to happen there? Bottom end of that range is going to be our resting. So even if you're not exercising, we're floating right around our resting rate. Probably going to be a little bit of a deficit with movement, so shouldn't gain any fat. But we're not in enough of a surplus that we're going to gain any lean. Top end of that range is gonna put us in a caloric surplus, but again, top end of the range is for people who are exercising, because when we burn those calories through our exercise and movement, it's gonna push us back down towards resting. The last zone that we would create would be our weight gain, again, designed not just to gain weight, but to gain muscle. And what we would do there is take the top end of that maintenance zone, and then we would just start to add 250 to 500 calories until we get enough of a surplus that we're gaining muscle so surplus again surplus means that we're put taking in more calories than we're burning that's when we're really able to gain muscle mass but chances are probably not going to lose fat in that range so again our four ranges medically supervised huge deficit designed to be used in a medical setting we don't want to be there weight loss zone if you're not exercising, eat on the lower end of that zone. If you are exercising, start at the top. Maintenance zone, designed to kind of keep you where you are. Maybe build a little muscle, lose a little bit of fat, but slow incremental change. And then our uh, weight gain or muscle gain, we're gonna end up in a big surplus. So we're going way, way above our resting rate. At the end of the day, doesn't really matter where you start. What we want to do is pick a, a calorie range, stick to it, be really, really consistent, do a DEXA at the beginning, follow it, come back, see if it worked. If it worked, and let's say your goal was to gain muscle and you gained lean mass, but you also uh, lost fat, we're like, awesome, that's perfect. We don't want to change anything. But if we gained lean mass and we also gained fat mass, we know we're probably not in enough of a deficit or we're in too much of a surplus, I should say, that we need to bring those calories down. We can bring those calories down through more movement or by just reducing our calorie intake. And if vice versa happens, let's say uh, you're trying to do weight gain and come back and you test and we lost fat and we lost lean for some reason, then we know we're not in enough of a surplus, so we need to bring those calories higher or reduce our activity. So, more of the story. RMR, really, really accurate in terms of giving us our resting rate, but we need to use the DEXA as a check and balance to kind of figure out what adjustments we need to make going forward to get our body to get the results that we want Training, movement, they're really, really big uh, influencers on our calorie burn. So it's hard to track that even if we're using a Whoop, even if we're using an Apple Watch. What we really want to do is track our diet and training 
do a DEXA at the beginning, do a DEXA at the end, and then we can see what worked. If it worked, awesome. We say it validates what we we're doing, keep doing it. If it didn't work, that's okay. We say it's an intervention. We get to look back at what we did, acknowledge it didn't work, and then decide what's the variable that we wanna change. We keep doing this game until we get results. So rest of metabolic rate, super, super cool test. Very, very useful. If we're trying to get specific goals. Um, highly recommend you guys do this uh, and pair it with your DEXA. Keep doing that. We're going to get really good results for you. Thanks.